What is good you guys welcome back to the airport welcome back to a brand new video and today's video we're going to be dissecting the Heat's win against the Memphis Grizzlies and also talking about the next game against the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, make sure you guys drop a like subscribe and comment down below um, as we drop almost you know uh, weekly for sure but almost twice a day thrice a day bangers on this channel where we talk about the Heat. If you guys are Heat fans man feel free to subscribe we are almost at 1500 subs we want to get there as soon as possible also hit up the Twitter in the pinned comment. Um, let's get right into it, man. So the Miami Heat uh, had a game tonight against the Memphis Grizzlies uh, away in Memphis. Uh, news came out before the game that Bam Adebayo was warming up with the intent uh, intent to play. Um, he was dealing with that knee injury, I'm pretty sure, that he uh, also had before the Hornets game, um, but decided to sit this one out because, you know, he could not play the game with the injury. But no Bam, no problem tonight, man. We we came out and we absolutely dominated the uh, the Memphis Grizzlies. We played a great, great, great game. Um, I thought a lot of guys stepped up uh, when, when they needed to. And I thought we had ourselves a really, really nice game. You know, um, I do want to talk about a lot of these players, so we're going to be getting right into it. Uh, starting off, Kyle Lowry with 15 points has finally gotten into some offensive rhythm. He's, you know, as far as scoring the ball is concerned, he's scored uh, double digits for the first time in his Heat career. Um, with 15 points, he had a plus minus of plus 21. Um, and, you know, he, he made his first two threes. He was four for five overall from the three point line, five for eight overall from the field. Very, very efficient performance. Eight assists as well. An um, amazingly well rounded game for Kyle Lowry. He, he was third and plus minus behind Jimmy and Dwayne Dedman. Um, and that just shows you what his impact is on this team. Uh, Dwayne Dedman was the starting center um, in Bam's uh, absence. I wanted Yurt Seven to get some minutes, but obviously. You know, Dwayne Dedman is the more experienced player, so we won with experience, which turned out to be the right choice because we won the game. He did get into a lot of foul trouble, though. Um, ended up picking up five fouls, so he didn't play that many minutes, only played about 17 minutes a game. I mean, 17 minutes this game, uh, but did hit a three-pointer, did grab nine rebounds, uh, you know, two of them being offensive rebounds. He grabbed seven defensive rebounds, um, and we ended up, you know, really, really using his boards, man. I, th I thought we did a pretty good job, you know, on the glass. Um, they also did a pretty good job, um, especially on the offensive glass. But total rebounds, I think we dominated them with 50 of ours, and then they had 32 of theirs. Um, they're they're a very good rebounding team, as you can you know probably guess by the names they have on the roster. But they're statistically the second best rebounding team behind us. Um, so we did a really good job on the glass, I thought. Um, Jimmy Butler, 27, five and seven, Jim VP, whatever you want to call it, three steals. He's just doing whatever it takes to win. He even hit a three-pointer today, um, as he did in the Charlotte game as well. Um, he's just doing whatever it takes to win, like I said, man. He's, he's just, you know, he's just willing our team to victory. He's very, very valuable, valuable to this team. Every time it, it seems like the Hornets or the Grizzlies were, make, were making a run, Jimmy was always that calming influence, or Kyle was always that calming influence that, you know, you could just put the ball in their hands and they could make something happen, whether it's a play or whether it's a you know shot for themselves. Um, shout out to Jimmy, man. He's been doing... He's been doing Jimmy things. He's out for revenge. Uh, PJ Tucker defensively had a pretty nice game, but offensively only hit one corner three, which is fine because Markeith Morris off the bench gave us eight points. Um, he hit two threes of his own and a mid-range jumper. All I'm pretty sure were in the first quarter or in the second quarter. Um, Duncan Robinson, 15 points. I told you guys, man, do not worry about Duncan Robinson because his shooting will come around. He's not a guy who's going to forget to shoot the ball. He's not... You know he's not disabled you know he'll be fine duncan robinson is a guy that you know is one of the top five shooters in the world and it's only a matter of time before he had figured out his jump shot and he he is you know on the right track now and like i said memphis is a team um that you know is almost dead last in giving up three-point shots they're dead last almost dead last in three-point um defense and we shot 57 percent from three shooting 21 from 37 as a team which is insane. Um, and this was the perfect game to get the shooters, um, you know, into rhythm. And Duncan Robinson definitely got his rhythm back in this game. Um, I also thought this was probably the perfect game to rest Bam because out of all these games that we play, you know, in the next, you know, eight game stretch where we play a lot of these hard teams, the Heat, I mean, the Grizzlies are probably the easiest team. No disrespect to them. But, you know, we have to play a lot of tougher teams, you know, coming up like the Mavericks, Celtics, Jazz, Nuggets, Lakers, Jazz, even the Clippers. Uh, Wizards, we got to play twice, I'm pretty sure, and they're five and one right now. Um, we got to play the Nuggets, Bucks again. Like, it was a good, it was a good night to rest, Bam, because it was on a back-to-back, -back and we were um, playing a team that 
was a playoff team, but it's not as good as a, a lot of these teams were about to play right now. So, um, yeah, I thought we did. We made the right decision by doing that. You know, just, 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 you know, err on their side of safety. Don't, you know, risk anything. Ben will be fine. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fighter. Off the bench, Tyler Hero again, 22 points, six man of the year. Like I said, lock that in for sure. He's averaging 22, seven and five, shooting about 46, 40 and 85 from the free throw line on the season. Insane numbers for Tyler. He's been playing great, you, you know, really, really well. Um, Max Truce gave us 12 points as well with three threes of his own. Um, prayers up to him. I don't know, you know, what the status on his injury is, but he did, you know, have a knee injury. He exited the game in the fourth quarter, but hopefully he's doing okay because we really, really need him. Um, but even if, if Max Struess misses some time, a guy that I think could replace him in the rotation until he's back and I, I think would do a great job is Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin had 12 points. Um, you know, he was very, very energetic. He, he was, you know, very good defensively. Um, I just thought he did a lot of the little things off the bench. And I think, you know, whoever let Caleb Martin fall to a two-way contract, thank you. Because I don't know how we got him on a two-way, but that's a steal of a pickup right there. Because he ha he is very, very talented for sure. Um, and yeah, man, this game was so good that UD got minutes. He scored a bucket shot to Udonis. Um, and that's basically it for the Grizzlies side. John Moran had 20 points, which is good, but it's not what he's been doing this season. So we definitely limited him. Um, I wanted to limit the Grizzlies under 100, but 103 is still fine. You know, that's very good defense still. Um, shout out to Desmond Bain and DeAnthony Melton, two guys I really, really like. Um, I even tweeted about Desmond Bain. You know, I I, I know about DeAnthony Melton. I, I've known about him. I'm pretty sure he went to USC last year. I even talked about him in the, in the preview video. He's a guy that, you know, he's, he's really, really good. He has a lot of talent. And um, he definitely, definitely... You know, use the talent to his advantage. Desmond Bain was a guy coming out of TCU. I kind of saw him as a catch and sh catch and shoot player, um, a guy that you know, you know, he just you know just likes to uh, be a three and D player. But Desmond Bain has been a lot more than that, and, and what I've been seeing so far in this season, his offensive game has really, really been ahead of schedule, and he's been taking a lot of pull up jump shots, off the dribble jump shots, and I think the Grizzlies have a really, really good one in Desmond Bain for sure. Um, so shout out to Desmond Bain, man. I'm a big fan of his game for sure. Um, as far as who we play next, like I said, I did mention we play the Dallas Mavericks next. I haven't been too impressed by the Mavericks, man. I don't think the Mavericks have been that good this season, um, but they're still a team that has Luka Doncic. I'm pretty sure they beat us twice last year uh, in both the games we played them. They just had a blowout loss against the Nuggets, um, and they will be playing against the Kings tomorrow. So we can kind of analyze that game and talk about, you know, just what they did right, what they did wrong in, in these games and how we can beat the Mavericks. But from what I've been seeing, it's a lot of just give the ball to Luka and a lot of these guys are just standing around, um, which is which is could work because Luka is a very, very generational talent. But, you know, a lot of times you need ball movement. You need people who are going to cut instead of just people standing around. I think the thing about the Mavericks is that I've always said this about the Mavericks. I think the Dallas Mavericks should build their team around Luka like the Hawks have done around Trey. Because the guys around Trey Young with the with the, with Atlanta are not just guys who are going to be spotting up. You know, Bogdanovich can create his own shot. We saw in the playoffs Kevin Herter showed flashes of him creating his own shot. Um, Gallinari, you know, he's a guy that can take players off the dribble, um, especially bigger guys because he's a very very skilled NBA player. Cam Reddish, you know, is a very talented player. You know, he he might he might have, he might have been relegated to being a catch and shoot player, but he has a lot of upside, and I think he can create his own shot. DeAndre Hunter is the only guy that I think is a 3 and D player for their team. And even John Collins is a guy that you can give the ball to. For the Mavericks, you don't really have that. The only guy that you know you have who can create his own shot, apart from Luka, is really Tim Hardaway Jr. And that's very sparingly. Porzingis is really a catch and shoot player with them. I, Porzingis has been absolutely awful this season. I'm, I'm, I just think they have to get rid of him or he has to request a trade or something because I just think that that is not working out for them. Um, Maxi Kleba has stepped up. I've liked what I've seen from him so far, but, you know, um, with the Mavericks, it's going to be a lot of trying to close out on shooters and make sure, you know, it's kind of like pick your poison. Do you want Luka Doncic, you know, to beat you or do you want the shooters to beat you? And I think last year, Tim Hardaway Jr. gave us 36 because we focused all our attention on Luka. Um, so I think hopefully we learn from that and hopefully, you know, we try to close out on the shooters and not just let, you know, Luka Doncic find everyone open. 
because that's when they're the most dangerous. They have guys off the bench like Trey Burke, who, who's a microwave, Jalen Brunson, who can also light it up off the bench. And like I said, Tim Hardaway Jr. gave us 36 points. I really like the Reggie Bullock pickup as far as spacing the floor. Um, and he's a very good shooter as well. So this, this is not an easy team to play. We just have to figure out which method do we want to take. Do we want to try to stop Luka Doncic and, you know, risk leaving players open by sending multiple bodies at him? Or do we want to make sure that we just have Luka Doncic ISO all day and just stick glue to the uh, the shooters that the Dallas Mavericks have? So um, Spoh going to have to figure that out. But I think this is a very winnable game if we play our cards right. The Mavericks have not been that good this season, I don't think. Um... Um, and yeah, after we play the Mavericks, we have another, you know, like I said, tough schedule of games, but we're five and one, man. We're a very scary team. We got shooters and um, I'm super excited to see what the future holds. Uh, defensively, we're generational, historical, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, man, let me know what your thoughts are about the Heat team in the comment section below. I'll see you guys later as always. Um, enjoy your day. Have a nice day. Peace.